I see everything that has ever happened here since time began. Hear every coo, cry and clamour resound through the ages. Feel everything. All your mortal emotions both joyous and grave. On a covert street level manoeuvre, I descend through the dusk onto Pilgrim's Way and traverse the old ford on the nith toward Dumfries. I look across the water, smile wryly at my image glaring back at me before salty southerly winds slash my earthly senses. I reach the banking where I shudder as I hear your call to arms. I plough the asphalt of Nith Place to uncover this lower burn where bold, able men and women rally to defend your weary weathered borough walls. Steadfast, staunch and toothy amidst the apathy of the pedestrians I walk amongst furtively. If the world can turn on a sixpence, your lifetime could turn depending on which bridge you take home. In these estates and schemes, there's a once fervent youth unwittingly subscribed to a drama of subdued ghettoisation. Indolence and resignation clashes with your inherent pride and resilience. Hypnotised by the rise and slosh of the nith, I avoid the gaze of whoever's path I cross as I obey the tide and head north. I am stricken tonight by this town's deafening silence. I am beguiled by the half-moons of Devergilla's old brig, casting feathers of light across the Nith's blue steel. Six celestial portals or hellish chasms, depending on which side of the river is to your advantage. Two loafers share a bench and a bottle at the sandy opening. They revel in the dark, numbing their pain in tandem savouring the sanguine smoke of scavenged cigarettes, oblivious to the sizzling crackle of flame and flesh. Pleasure and punishment sit side by side where innocent sage healers were choked and put to the stake. Their limp, impotent mouths gutter pitch and tar in perpetuity. The faces in attendance of this burning, livid and luminous with approval, are licked and caressed by the fire and brimstone of Presbyterianism. Daughters and sisters scapegoated to death by men of the cloth in accordance with dogma. I walk on by in reverence. The tourist information plugs a gap in a shy thoroughfare's once proud smile. I see broken faces on board the 920 for London, the same faces beaming on the 920 for Belfast, leaping from the coach like salmon into one of the White Sands' few remaining hostelries. Yet another generation's secrets and indiscretions are written on its walls. People have always been pulled here by the anonymity proffered by Nithsdale's haunts and shadows, a gravitational pull that even your bypass won't break. I am pulled left to where the ebb of the tide is barred by the call, and I stand captivated by the elegant, uplit observatory. Such refinement, a cultivated lot, aren't you? The traces of the Albrig's three destroyed arches emerge like fractals. Stitches of light thread through the jet black of infinity. I see traders and pilgrims pay the toll to cross Devergilla's earlier wooden bridge, the arms being received by the mendicant grey friars, begging to live and living to preach. I smell the fruits of their labour lifted on a summer breeze, willed by their honeybees and melodies of birds perched in their walled orchard trees. I am summoned by the ghostly French and Italian chants lilting down the friar's venal. Beyond the abandoned markets, inspectors of cattle herded by cars parked on reclaimed land. No man can tether time nor tide, however, and the downstream pushes to remind you of the folly of man's will versus nature's might. The nith bursts her banks and I am pushed right onto Bank Street and into safety. Such sober austerity in these buildings. Once great vaults of wealth lamenting the last flight of capital. The city of Dumfries still has a good ring to it, doesn't it? The sweet strain of a fiddle bowed by work-heavy arms courses from the Sanghus of Scotland. And I wonder, what if Burns had lived today? Imagine Wordsworth, Coleridge and Blake, all hooked up with him in Facebook, held court in the Globe of a Friday evening. The first bastion of an international romantic movement. The poised and aloof mid-steeple chimes all lang syne, like a fanfare, as I am hunted onto the high street by this tormenting flood. I am arrested by the vegetation sprouting from perfect rooftops over ruined shop fronts. I see a mob at the Merkit Cross, 
they burn the Articles of Union of 1707, and I laugh at the irony of the Unionist majority Dumfries is known for today. Did you not know there's a rebel spirit percolating through the generations and sleep staggering in these schemes? The blushing golo of hand painted signs point to the future, somewhere even I can't tread. Will the high street be reclaimed by the people as the white sands is by the tide? My image glares back at me again as I begin my ascent on my way back home. I am St Michael, patron saint of the warriors and the sick alike. Your patron saint, Dumfries. Your heart still beats under your cobblestone breast. So do I really need to intervene here? Well, that's up to you. But if paradise has been lost, then surely utopia is in the post. We'll see.